Our US Bureau Chief Zoe Daniel was a journalist who asked that question of Sean Spicer and then took a call a couple of hours later from the White House uh, press office. Uh, let's listen to uh, a bit of what Zoe's had to say. We've just had a call from a different person at the White House, not Sean Spicer, but another spokesperson wanting to clarify, saying that they just want to make sure that we're all on the same page, uh, that although Sean Spicer said that in the briefing, the president himself is still considering uh, whether to actually go ahead with the deal, has not fully decided whether to do that, uh, but that if he does decide to do so, it would, quote, be only because of the long-standing relationship with Australia. Now, I then asked her whether she meant that a decision would be made to accept people after they had gone through the extreme vetting procedure and whether that was what we were talking about. She said, no, it's about whether to go ahead with the deal at all. Jeez. Uh, that does it's seem to be quite at odds isn't it? With, yes, with what was said uh, in the briefing today. So... Where we are, I'm not sure. We'll probably have to go back to the briefing tomorrow to ask for further clarity. But it, it did seem fairly definitive, didn't it, uh, with what Sean Spicer said in the briefing, that he basically said, yes, we'll follow the deal uh, if those people measure up to the extreme vetting procedures. But there does seem to be uh, some wobbliness in that statement now. Right, OK. And uh, just that, we're just going back to the Sean Spicer uh, comments in the media conference, uh, there'd been uh, uncertainty about the actual numbers. And was that the first time we'd actually heard a, a clear number as well? Yeah, that's right. We haven't actually heard a number mentioned. And in fact, I think the other thing that's important to say is that because the US is effectively saying that if it does go ahead with the deal, these people will be subjected to extreme vetting and then only those who meet that extreme vetting would be allowed to come to America, they could choose not to accept any of those people uh, because perhaps none of them would meet their extreme vetting process and that is a process that's still being developed as we speak, as I understand it. Uh, but he seems to be saying that up to 1,250 people were under consideration, and that's the approximate number of people that are currently in the detention facilities on Nauru and Manus Island, but would not necessarily include those who were living out of detention in the community on Nauru, for example. Uh, and again, I asked the White House spokeswoman who made that follow-up phone call uh, just where that 1,250 number came from and whether those other people on Nauru would be included, and she didn't know. Uh, so, again, no real clarity on exactly the sort of numbers that we're talking about. Australia is a very small player in uh, global politics, but is this Australia deal, has awareness of it been raising any questions from the American media and media generally about how this, uh, because it's a significant, significant number of people, 1,250 people, this deal with Australia was possibly going ahead while this ban was in place for others. Yeah, it hasn't had a lot of play in the US press. It may get more now. Uh, yeah. And perhaps that's one of the reasons for the phone call of clarification, because as you rightly point out, what's happened over the last few days is highly political. Uh, it's caused all sorts of protests across the country from people who oppose it. Uh, so for the new administration to be seen to be perhaps contradicting its own yeah. policy by making an exception to accept people from Australian offshore detention centres uh, may not play politically well when they're trying to obviously put forward a hard line on immigration policy. Uh, so that may be uh, behind in part how we've seen that unfold here this afternoon. OK, now just moving on to a couple of other issues because there's still plenty going on in US politics. What's happening with the Supreme Court nomination? Yes, yeah, so the Supreme Court nominee uh, will be announced tonight at 8 o'clock. Uh, the President will announce uh, the person who he plans to appoint to the Supreme Court. Uh, during the election campaign, he put forward a list of 21 potential candidates. Uh, that now seems to have been narrowed down to a couple. Uh, so the two front runners at this stage are Thomas Hardiman, who sits on the US Court of Appeals Third Circuit in Philadelphia, and Neil Gorsuch, who sits also on the US Court of Appeals 10th Circuit uh, in Colorado. Will that mean the numbers are e evenly split on the Supreme Court or will that tip the numbers generally in favour of conservative politics or do we still have to wait for one more appointment? 
So at the moment, there's a 4-4 situation because of the death of Justice Scalia around this time last year. Uh, appointing one of these new justices should create a 5-4 situation. Uh, but that said, both have been known to rule in favour of the intention of the Constitution rather than necessarily their political right. position. Uh, Gorsuch, for example, has been known to rule in a, a, a kind of liberal or progressive fashion if he has felt that the intent of the Constitution was that. So it doesn't necessarily automatically mean, although, you know, in part you will see a trend that way uh, for automatic conservative uh, policies to be uh, rubber stamped by the court. Zoe Daniel reporting there from the US. Now just back